Hey everybody, welcome to Application Development Virtual Group Webinar. My name is Sarah Huang, the co-organizer. Join me here is Debbie Huang, our co-organizer as well. Um, first of all, my apologies for posting the incorrect uh, webinar date on our website. Uh, which caused uh, uh, some members to join yesterday instead of today. And um, hopefully um, those who couldn't attend, uh, because uh, even though I sent a, a second email, but it was kind of late. So those who couldn't attend today, and, and I will send an email to the entire uh, virtual group so that they can they can get the recording link to watch it, the this event later. Uh, today's speaker uh, uh, for the Python jumpstart for SQL Server experts is uh, Joanne Hu. Uh, uh, sorry, Joanne Xu, right? Uh, Joanne Xu. Uh, Joanne holds an uh, MCSE uh, certificate in data management and analytics. And she's a business and a technical consultant at Duke uh, Energy, where she leads analytics projects and builds robotic and streamlined solutions with her SQL, Python, and big data coding skills. Before that, Joanne had worked as a chemist in the pharmaceutical industry and then a stay-at-home mom. She attributes her career advancement and achievement in data analytics to SQL Server user group, local meetings, SQL Saturdays, and past virtual events and recordings, all of which are informative and inspiring. Thank you, Joanne, for being a big fan of PASS. Uh, we appreciate Joanne sharing her knowledge with us tonight. I'll uh, first take a couple of minutes to go through some housekeeping items from PASS, then we'll transfer screen over to Joanne. Um, and also, for your information, I have posted Joanne's slide deck to our website already. So feel free to download the slides if you like. So, um, PASS has launch, uh, will launch a new virtual group called Diversity, Equality, and Inclusion in Adam, and this virtual group's first session is in uh, is on October twenty second at sixteen hundred UTC. And the uh, past virtual summit twenty twenty session schedule now is available, so you can uh, check it out. And PASS also had uh, this year, uh, the virtual summit has 19 full day pre-conference sessions uh, at the virtual event, virtual summit. And here's the, um, the code for a $50 um, off of your registration fee for the past summit uh, of our virtual group, uh, which is the code is VGDISHX2H. Hey, and, Sarah, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt. Your screen is, your slides not changed. My slide, I, I've been advancing it, really. Why is yeah, it's stuck on the past community news October 2000, uh, okay. 2020. Oh, I'll be advancing it. I don't know why it's not. Tonight it is <laughs> kind of strange. Uh, okay. 
Um, uh, it's fine. You continue it. Um, can, you, can you see it? No, it's still it's stuck. Not um, changing. Yes. Oh, oh, it's only me. I don't know. No, no, no. You're right. It's not advancing. Uh, well, I don't know why. But yeah. But let's continue it. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been advancing this and I can see the changes, but it doesn't uh, reflect on the on other people's screen. Um, okay, well, I'll quickly go through it. Uh, if uh, anybody needs the information, I can uh, email the slide up. Um, all right, so uh, 2020 past Passion Award nomination now is open. Uh, this uh, nomination will begin from uh, begin on September 14th until October 15th. And past pro membership um, is here, and uh, it will drive greater and stronger learning and networking opportunities for the data community uh, with the world class. Uh, world-class content, exclusive training opportunities and discounts. So if you uh, would like to advance your membership to PRO, you're more than welcome to do so. And since you guys can't see the, the slide, uh, I'll skip the virtual group webinar information, but um, On October 30, 30th, uh, past uh, global Chinese virtual group will have a session about uh, Power BI advanced an analysis of time dimension with DAX by uh, Meng Zong. Uh, be sure to register for that if you speak Mandarin or oh, understand Mandarin. Uh, also, PASS has some um, upcoming, uh, PASS has uh, SQL Saturdays, um, which are all virtual, so you can check it out on the SQLSaturday.com. And, you know, as always, PASS has many virtual groups, and you're more than welcome to join our virtual group, which is uh, application development. And uh, I also lead uh, Global Chinese. So if you'd like to join that one, you're more than welcome as well. And PASA has a career center. Um, you can go to the website, uh, pass.org uh, pass slash uh, careers.aspx to check it out. And uh, if you would like to ask questions during Q&A session, please raise your hand by clicking that hand sign. Uh, if you have a busy background, noisy background, uh, uh, post your question to the chat window. I'll uh, read them out to Joanne. Okay, that's all I have. Uh, now I'm trying to make Joanne the presenter and keep my fingers crossed. Okay, it's all yours, Joanne. Thank you so Hi, much. Hi, can you hear me, Sarah? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, thank you very much for joining me in this evening, a uh, Saturday evening at nine o'clock for Eastern time. For a lot of you probably still sleepy. So I will try to make this as fun as possible. And uh, as Sarah mentioned for my background, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, tech. For my background, this is a, a picture to show me. The baseline I would see is time. The time goes by not smoothly as a straight, but it has my valleys and the peaks. It has wrinkles, but as I gain my age, 
I think I gained some wisdom to uh, pick up some wisdom in the virtual uh, in the past SQL Saturdays and the local SQL user groups. Uh, so I want to share some with you, and then with my own experience, I want to share with you. And uh, this picture showed that I have been a chemist for 10 years, and then I have been a stay-at-home mom for seven years. Uh, about three years ago, I joined Duke Energy as a data uh, analyst. And then you can see that from the picture I chose, I clearly prefer the last career because the even though the first and the last one both are colored as green but the first one colored as the wrong place and the last green is very simple as it said the simplicity is the ultimate form of sophistication and then so that's my thing and then in the middle part is a cartoon clip from a famous book of parenting how to talk so your kids will listen and how to listen so they will talk. I will uh, give a little more detail in the next slide. So my question is this, after you see this, you clearly know that I prefer the my latest career, but do you know the reason? Guess why I prefer the latest latest career from in my time axis? Mm -hmm. This is our life, daily life, and we are trying to navigate through it. The, it's the same thing for, for what, whether I was a chemist, was a stay-at-home mom, or as a database developer or data analyst. I like this the, as a data professional, data analytics professional, because each day I will meet my best friend many, many times. Who is my best hey. friend? Hey, Joanne. Can you is hear? This see slide, what, yeah, yeah, is, is this it, slide supposed to be pitch dark? Yeah, this is a pitch dark one. And because oh, okay. my, my best friend will show in this pitch dark background. Okay. It is error messages. And a lot of them. You will see that every day, no matter you are working with SQL Server or Python. So the error message for me, it's an instant reward because it tells you what you have, you could do better. And they, when I was a chemist, there's no such instant reward. Sometimes there's no feedback at all. Sometimes the feedback is so bad. And uh, as a stay at home parent, kids do give feedbacks, but as a parent, we usually treat the feedback in a wrong way. For example, if you see this error message on the screen, you will go back to change your code. You will never press wrong, wrong again for 3,000 times. But with kids, we will probably use the wrong way many, many times. So that's why I, I choose a cartoon from the book. And uh, that means if you are a young parent, you can read that book, understand what the error message from the kids and then um, respond in the correct way rather than same thing again and again and it will be very frustrating for both you and your kids so uh, i will sh uh, move on from my introduction of myself to the topic of today python first before we do anything we should download and install python uh, here is the, the uh, simple way. First, you go to anaconda.com and then go to download. Choose your operation system and then choose the Python version that you want. Download it, install it. Uh, it's no, uh, um, it's very easy uh, uh, process. Will be done within 20 minutes. And then after that, you just go to the start of your uh, Windows and then uh, type Jupyter Notebook. And then the, the, when the new window jumps out, click on New Notebook. You will see a new notebook comes up. 
as the first thing that we will do is we will print hello. Normally we will print hello world, but this time let's print hello SQL. And then after you uh, make a uh, uh, Python command, you just uh, click around. This the next part will show the result of this command. So this is what we uh, start of using Python. I think for many, I have been stopped here and then come back here again, again for several times because uh, uh, first of all, I want to explain why go to Anaconda rather than go to python.org to download Python because Python itself uh, has to work with many packages. The Anaconda package, uh, the Anaconda download comes not only with the Python core, but also with the Python packages and with Jupyter uh, Spider to at least the two uh, easy to use uh, develop IDE environment. So that's why we go to Anaconda. And then uh, for some developer, they want to use Spider, uh, but I think I like Jupyter because it's easy to uh, wrong part of the command sometimes. So it, you, 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 you will see many different styles. Uh, you choose the one that you like most. Okay, and I, as I, I mentioned that I heard uh, this presentation has been given, this is the third time. Uh, many people had the same experience as I had. We just start to learn Python, but then we stop. We learn again to this step, print hello world, and then stop again. We never go to, uh, not everyone can go further. This is not unique for Python learning. For learning everything, it's the same. As you can see that if a person wants to learn swimming in this beautiful ocean, the first thing the person face is the breaking waves. And then this area is where the, it's easy to swim. But breaking waves will stop you. You will have a big resistance. So tonight I want to share with you is how as a SQL developer, we have some good way to directly break these waves and then go to this area. In this area, we can learn. We will have, we don't know everything, but we know how to manipulate, how to Google, what's the keyword, what's the, uh, what's the instant reward that can keep us going to learn more. That's the purpose for, me, for tonight's presentation. And uh, as I mentioned, the SQL way, what the SQL way is. I will first give an example, code example. This example, I will see if it has three parts. I will go to the part one by one. The uh, ultimate function for this code clip is to get an Excel file, load every content of that Excel file into SQL Server. So I will, with that, I will go to the steps of this one. The first two row, uh, the first line is imports. The punctuation part, what, mm, I forgot the name of this, this symbol. This, this is like the SQL uh, comment. Number sign. Number sign, okay, thank you, Sarah. This number sign is like the comment art for, uh, for Python. So this is just a comment. This three portion, this this three portion of this code clips has the uh, com comments. The, uh, I I would see that the initial learner don't pay much attention to the comments, but still a good habit to form it from the beginning. The first part is import. As I mentioned, that Python need a lot of packages to well uh, to easy work or make it even possible to use Python. You have to use packages. Without packages, it's too simple and we won't achieve anything. For today, for this little clip, uh, code clip, we use two parts, the two packages. First one is pandas. Pandas is the one that will read an Excel file and I read it on th this line for the, and the pan, uh, 
in import pandas as a PD. So later on, if we use pandas functions, we can directly uh, rotate as a PD. So read the Excel file. The Excel file will be the Excel file will be defined by the string variable, and then read uh, read Excel file to form a data frame. So data frame, a lot of people will uh, simplify it as a DF. And with this data frame, I would think this data frame is inside of our computer as the table format. And then we will connect to SQL Server. On my, this is my SQL Server server name, and this is the database name. The connection string is uh, Windows authentication so it's trusted connection equal to yes if you are SQL uh, authentication you will see user ID or password equal to some something and you can google that for the details for uh, SQL authentication and then finally define what's the driver to connect to the SQL server with this string we can make a SQL connection now, with the SQL connection, the data frame that holds the information of the SQL server, uh, of the Excel file, will simply do a uh, two SQL. And then the two SQL function will have several argument. The first one is the table name. The second one is the SQL server connection. And the third one is the schema name. The fourth one is very good one. If exist, then append. If uh, you can choose replace, so that if the table exists already, the everything will be wiped off and uh, replaced with the whole content of this uh, data frame. Or the index equal to false means if you said e index equal to true, then there will be one more column called index will be one, two, three, four, five added to the columns of this Excel file. I like to use this example of code, uh, this code example because first it's very simple, only several lines. The, the code itself only uh, six lines and then it do a lot of things. It saved uh, a lot of click with SQL Server data imports, uh, imports uh, utility, something like uh, we all know that in SQL Server we do the task import data. Uh, that's a lot of uh, clicks, and then this one uh, don't need to do any click. Also, another good thing of this one is as a SQL Server developer, we know that in SQL Server we have to first create table with all the column names and the column data type. For the uh, data, uh, for uh, SQL Alchemy, you don't need to do that. The two SQL itself will create the table and then insert the table by itself. So it's very convenient. Uh, you, that's, that's the thing. And then, so right now, I, I think I will move on. If you have a question about this, we will discuss it in detail. For this one, I want to see that I want to, from this clip, it's the next one. It will be slightly changed. First, let's look at this line. The string variable called the file, the Excel file, gave the Excel file location and the name of the Excel file. Look at this backward slash or forward slash. I never, this like this slash symbol uh, for, Windows, when we do the copy, it never gave this type. It's gave the opposite, opposite direction of a slash. So this one will be changed. And also look at this string, the uh, create engine string. It's very long, uh, not uh, easy to read and then replace. So next one is only about string of SQL. We will do exactly the same thing, but just to place string of SQL. Oh, sorry, string of Python. First, the for the first one, this this one could be directly copied from Windows, 
and then the R means now the this slash is a no, uh, will be, can use not you don't have to use the Python specific backward forward slash you can use anything that directly copied from uh, Windows and then the second string we can give it a name call it connection string as a string we can do anything we know in SQL Server we can substring it we can uh, uh, concatenate it or oh, and then oh, what else we can tell the length a lot of things that were applicable to SQL will be applicable to uh, Python too so it's easy for with this I think it's easier for SQL developer to Google I will uh, mention about that a little later for Google keyword normally I will see uh, SQL server how to concatenate the strings several strings now you just uh, type python how to uh, count, uh, count, uh, count several strings so that's the slightly change uh, the, ser the search keyword you will get what you need and then with uh, with test and a lot of error messages you will get what you get so th this is uh, exactly the same thing as the last one, just as seeing that this one is the a slightly var uh, variation with playing with string in Python. And then, so this is simply one Excel file. One, oh yeah, this, this uh, two SQL. The argument, if you don't um, explicitly name the sheet name, it will pick the first sheet in this whole or Excel file and so that I think with this next one is a uh, okay this one is the first I said instead of using that uh, picture this is where we want to go the piece part going through the the breaking waves we just use a uh, bridge to go to those part so the bridge is this for before I know Python I only know from Excel file to SQL server now with Python we can use we can use the data pandas data frame to to translate a Excel file to a Python pandas data frame and then load it to, to SQL server that's what I think the best way for SQL Server to for SQL Server expert to know, learn Python is to start with our familiar topics that is table, and then uh, uh, employ the tools in Python to work with tables, work with columns, and uh, and of course we know a little bit data. Uh, we know uh, we have to know uh, some basic knowledge of Panda uh, of Python, like uh, how the data type of Python is, how to how to manipulate the uh, the string or or uh, loop, and so that next one is uh, the homework. So that I think. That is a good example, and then with those knowledge, everyone in the audience should be uh, not too difficult with help of Google. And then you practice, try, you will be finishing these several uh, interesting homeworks. The first one is import a folder of several files into SQL Server uh, uh, using what I have talked about. We will read uh all the file names into a place right and then we will make a, a loop for every file in that place we will uh, make different data frame and then that data frame we will add one column for that data frame the column will hold the file name at least the part of the file name that uh, doesn't have the excel file extension the part that we need or some part uh, use some substream way to get the part, get one more column, and then load the Excel, uh, load the data frame to SQL, to, uh, to uh, 
table. So uh, we can do different ways. That is load the several files into one SQL Server table. Of course, you can use uh, substring or string variables to load into different tables. So I think that's that homework. My feeling is after the uh, last example, this is uh, easy homework. And then from this uh, homework, you will practice the loop in Py with Python. And the second homework is import multiple sheets of one Excel file into SQL Server. Here will be have, uh, I mentioned that in this two SQL function, the argument, if you provide a sheet name as a string, it will go to specific sheet. And if you tell sheet name equal to all, it will get everything in. But how does the data frame or something, the, but then, it, uh, sorry, here, the read, the read Excel file. The read Excel file, you have to provide the sheet name if you don't uh, provide the sheet name, then it will get the first one. If you uh, see the sheet name equal to all, it will get everything in. But after it getting in, it's not a data frame anymore. It's a data frame with its name of the sheet name. So it's called a dictionary. And then in order to load that dictionary into, because, but for here, it has to be a data frame in order to load into a table. So you have to first translate that uh, dictionary into data frame. So, so after that, I guess to finish this homework, you will have to Google how to make a dictionary, a data frame, or some example will show you. And uh, so that's the, I would see the first part of my presentation. We start with a very simple, useful clip, and then we'll develop the rest of the part on your own with the help of Google and error messages. Uh, because I told you some homework, so I will re give you some reward, a little funny clip that for myself. I have this one. And I will tell you why I choose this clip to entertain you. That, that's a, 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 I uh, uh, go to karate class together with my children so that I have learned a little bit. And then I want to show off. So I, I want to make a clip. What I find is, no, it's not a show off. It's totally a laugh stock. So I use this to tell my coworker, come to my presentation and uh, you will have a huge minute of laugh. So that's what I'm seeing. But when you look, look at it, it's not a laugh that hard because I edit the movie. In the real life, I do it really, really slow. I would see it's like a bear or like a panda. Um, completely black, so slow that you will, you won't believe it's a disgrace, not a funny anymore. So with that said, why I show this? Because although I shared the previous, the previous uh, code example with you, but it's a, not a, that useful code. Mm, it, I said the good thing is convenient. You don't need to create a table. You just bring the, uh, the uh, SQL Alchemy will create the table with the good data, uh, with a good column name and a data type for you. However, it's very slow because when data frame load into SQL Server, it's a row based. It's not a bulky load. It's, it's, it's very slow. Uh, how slow? I think for three or four columns, one million row will take one hour. Uh, it's very convenient when you have smaller size of data and not for large size of data. So for large size of data, we have to use something else. So that can give us a faster load, the bulk insert. Next one will be 
uh, similar to uh, it will uh, I will kind of pave away for fast load, but I will do it slowly. First, first we don't use pandas anymore because uh, the panda data frame it has the good part, but it won't do the fast load. Even though uh, the two SQL has a argument called a fast execute, but uh, I tried it myself, it didn't work well. And then some other users also with, with, with Google search, it doesn't work. Import the uh, Pi ODBC will uh, solve something. So Pi ODBC is one that can connect in, into SQL Server. The connect, the connect string will be slightly different, but even though it's slightly different, it still is a, uh, a string uh, variable. You can first define that string variable or directly write the string variable here. Uh, you can see the, the curved bracket. The curved bracket, the curved bracket, and then can be replaced by other names followed. The, their special, special part of Python string. Uh, format uh, so that you can name a SQL server and then replace it later. And then the, after the connection gets done, you will define another string. Another string is SQL command. SQL command here has started with three uh, quotation marks. In Python, the SQL uh, uh, string could be simple quote like this, and or could be double, could have double quote and could have uh, the three double quotes. I when I write a SQL command, I mostly write three because it can easily break into many part and not and leave the single quote for we need for a lot of use inside of this SQL command. For this example, I just uh, uh, use the simplest one to uh, as an example, and then you uh, the cursor means you connect it to make it execute the SQL command. And then the all data uh, the cursor will hold the data. You can put it into a variable called all data. Now let's print the all data. All data, you will see that. This is the all data look like. It's a bracket. Inside the bracket, there are several, uh, for this table, I only have three rows. So you will see only three rows, but each one will have the content of each row. The con uh, that row will be uh, include inside of um, parentheses. So the, this is a special part this type called list. And then the list, for this list, it has three element. And then the the first element, instead of calling it the first, first, it's the index called zero. So I don't know how to make this disappear. This is print all data uh, bracket zero. So just want to show you that the for the Python, for string, it start with zero. This is a zero character. First, uh, first, second, third. For uh, list, the this is a zero element. Element one, element two, and uh, so that the the is is very uh, uh, how to say. I want to share this moment because as I learn Python, I figured out this. When we do the, it's easy for us to understand the Excel file and a SQL table are exactly the same thing. Learning Python, the table could uh, appear as many different um, format. The first part we already know, you, you can make it a data frame. And then the second part, we make it a list of a list or a, a tuple. And then in the first part, I mentioned that it will can read into a dictionary. There are many other ways too. If you do big data, 
it will read into a data frame or a RDD. RDD, when I first learned big data, RDD didn't come to me. So, so I kind of learn and have to drop, learn, have to drop. Until one day, uh, last spring, in a SQL Server user group of our local user group, or in a presentation, I suddenly realized RDD is one of is similar to SQL table, similar to Panda data frame, and now all these things could exchange. Similarly, they can not only go to SQL Server or save as Excel file. All this. Uh, middle thing could change into Hadoop file, Hive table, could go to NoSQL non database, could even go to graph database. I say even because I didn't try by myself use graph database, but in theory, I guess it could. And it could become, a, a, all this could become a SaaS data set. So, uh, this is the aha moment for me because after that, learning become easy. Uh, as long as no matter what I wrote, the Python code, I will pay attention to what the content stays. Is it in a list? Then what I want to do to the list. So I will go to Google Python list, how to get blah, 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 blah. And then if the, the content of the that table or file is in a Panda the data frame, then I can search Google as Panda data frame, how to concatenate two columns together or how to um, many type of different thing. I remember that for 2019 SQL Server, the newest edition of SQL Server, you can do the several several combine several rows into one thing previously in sql server you have to do with the xml format or something and then uh, uh, now with python you can do the same thing as long as you know what your stuff is at and then google that thing so that's the part that i want to share with everyone i think with this aha moment my swimming at the beautiful ocean become very enjoyable and expand very fast. Because we, I don't have feedback, so we will discuss it later. Uh, we will answer questions probably around this when the audience have interaction with the audience. And then This is a picture for me. That's the feeling of after I feel that. And then in reality, uh, it's not only the feeling, but also the, uh, the real life. I pick up other part very fast. And then with that, but, uh, even though the most important part, the most important wisdom I want to share is this page. We have to go back to what I said at the beginning, continue about the fast load, right? Remember that I introduced the the list of list or list of tuple and at this part and in order to uh, but I get this list of things from the for, for fast load. For that part, I will see that this is a, a code that kind of followed followed the last piece right now the content of some place is inside of a list and then i will have length of that length of that list for example last one only have three elements so this is will be three and i will see when the part start and next i will make the connection string this could be another sql server because when we do work some, sometimes the SQL server doesn't uh, doesn't have linked the server purpose, so we have to do the not link to another SQL server, and then and similarly do another cursor and then execute another SQL command. This time the command have three question mark inside, so the execute no matter execute many or execute itself 
the, the question mark is will be replaced by uh, the list of things here and um, so that with that list we will be very easily fast load things into SQL Server. The, the commit part is a selection part. I have another, I, uh, uh, at the local user, user group, uh, SQL user group, I gave a presentation uh, discussing in great detail how to manipulate the SQL command with string, uh, with Python string, how to replace and how to get the uh, the number of the question mark based on how many uh, you, how many parameters you have on the list. So if I will give the link at the, the end of this one, or we can discuss it during the question part. And uh, so the, uh, with this, uh, it will be solving the problem of Panda data frame of slow load. But of course, for this one, you have to first define the table before using this one. So the table has to be existing in SQL Server before using the execute insert into. And uh, so I think that's, uh, we, we will discuss it later about the detail if the audience has a question about this. Quickly, I find that my presentation is very fast. Uh, the, with that, with the my share of uh, the, the uh, with sharing of the uh, the uh, most important aha moment of my Python learning, I will see that I will challenge our audience with more homework. The first one is use Python to automate or streamline some process. Uh, uh, Instead of learning, learning itself, you are always standing in the resisting uh, waves. So using it will bring yourself into the uh, different part of learning. I just uh, had uh, heard a joke. One person, one a man, uh, was walking in New York Street. He tried to find how to get to Carnegie Hall, Hall. and then he find try to find someone to ask. So he find a, a person to ask. That person happened to be a musician. So the man approached the person, asked, uh, uh, "Would you please tell me how can I get to Carnegie Hall?" And then the musician answered, "Practice, man, practice." So. The homework is you know, try in your own work, try to find a thing, the, the try to find a process that you can use Python. A process right now might be uh, a lot of manual work, might be a lot of click of mouse either in Excel or in SQL Server, or a lot of copy paste for for any reason in your own daily work try to identify one of that task that uh, uh, could use what you have learned today of the simple knowledge of Python. The way, of course, with a lot of other search and, uh, and, uh, and uh, try and errors, uh, then this is the best practice way than watching several hours of Python video because I fully believe that we, uh, the data professionals, have all the knowledge. We just uh, need a little twist, a little keyword change in order to learn and use Python. And another suggestion for this is, I think some, if you are downloading from uh, SFTP folders, it's a uh, several click save, click save into a folder. All the files might have similar name or similar format. You can uh, Google the Python package to download the um, SFTP uh, to download the file from SFTP sites. So during those practice, you will 
fully utilize all the knowledge of a string character string manipulation list manipulation and then loop uh, how to loop through everything uh, for for myself i think i used uh, i only used four loop for for every element in a set or every element in a list do something i myself never used the while loop because of our um, how to say our work right we are more like a set sql a sql uh, sql developers or sql uh, users always look at things in a set way so we never try to when some number while some number so i uh, but the for loop is pretty powerful satisfied almost all my needs and uh, so the the second part after you finish the first uh, uh, homework, you will be very happy to call yourself a Python expert and then share your knowledge in the user group, either in this kind of virtual group or in your local user group, SQL Saturday, those type of um, place to share your knowledge. This will bring up more passion and then push yourself, learn a little in more details all the varieties of the code that you wrote, all the argument that could be changed and then replaced by other ways to achieve other ways. After this, we can talk to different, peek into different fields. First field is big data fields. Uh, it will use PySpark package. Uh, all other things from my point of view is similar to what I showed with you in the PYODBC package. You will first define the, the SQL. Now it's not a SQL server SQL, but a high SQL. And then make that uh, um, query result or the data set, a data frame or RDD, and then join with other RDD, filter by something, uh, aggregate, I RDD aggregate data frame. So it's a lot of uh, similarity between tables. And uh, so a lot of similarity between uh, our daily work, just uh, use slightly different accent of Python or SQL. And then we can talk with data scientists. Uh, I think for me, before I start to use SQL, I uh, stop before I start to use Python together with SQL, I learned uh, Python, watch Python videos for those data scientist, um, data scientist uh, course, or it, it, this is a big part. It, this is not a good path for learning Python, but once you know Python, it's easier to go to those course to learn more data scientist, data science, and then my own understanding of data science. If there, there are some data scientists in the audience, I don't want to, them to feel offended by my own feeling. My own feeling is data science is only to get to the one column of the table, even though it's a very difficult way to, it's very difficult using traditional way to get that column, to either to tell whether this, to, to predict something of this role or to classify this role. But from a database point of view, it's just to get to one column of the database. So for other data engineer pipelines, the data science code doesn't interfere with the data pipeline part. The data uh, science just to provide the very important column, the result or data inside of that one or more several columns of data, but the, all the other part, how to prepare for data science uh, model to work, uh, still need a lot of data background and data knowledge. And uh, finally, we, we can uh, take a peek at uh, API developers. My personal view of this uh, code is they are working on individual rows of table, either insert or 
display. So I hope API developers won't be offended either. So and, then, and then we can look at the data architect and the solution architect uh, code. Uh, I would say that uh, probably after as a, as a database SQL developer, after we have uh, peeked into all these several roles, we can be we can be equipped to be a data architect or solution architect. That's my personal opinion, and so that with that, I think yeah, the reference. First, of course, the Google part. I mentioned many many times that all I have learned is to use Google and then use Google in a precise way. Tell Google what package you are from, what type of thing that we are working at, uh, PYODBC or Pandas or PySpark, and then what the specific thing we could uh, like even list or uh, data frame or Spark data frame, PySpark data frame, and those type. And then what we want to do is exactly the same thing as what we daily use for SQL Server code as Google's. And some of the code, like how to get from a folder, how to get it from several uh, several sheets of uh, the Excel file, I have organized of um, the code inside of my own block. And from the category, choose Python, you will see there are at least five more articles about that. And then this print, this uh, link goes to a presentation of, presentation of local user group. As I mentioned at the beginning of my Python journey, I use Python to query uh, SQL Server. So the uh, the SQL command and then how to get into parameterize the SQL command and then the, the SQL command itself, part of the string, how to replace part of the string with the variables that come from other list. If you have, uh, if you feel it's needed, you can go to here to take a look at the files. And then, uh, lastly, if you want to discuss more with me, this is my email. And um, I will give thanks to my good friend, Ellen. She introduced me to this virtual group and then she organized another event for me so I can practice the content before today, uh, uh, way before today to know that what the audience could like and most likely to have. So thank you, Ellen. And with that, I think I will uh, answer questions that anyone have. Cool. Thank you, uh, Joanne. Uh, great uh, information here, and uh, appreciate you sharing the journey, uh, your Python learning journey with us tonight. Um, the first question here is that um, somebody was curious uh, when you uh, load the Excel sheet, mm -hmm. um, can the process be automated? Uh, let's see, I uh, don't quite understand the automate part. What does the uh, automate mean? I would say yes, because uh, because if you have a Python code, then you can use a job scheduler that could schedule this little job to run, right? I, uh, so I kind of not understand uh, this very well. It's either let this Python job run automatically, or we can make this more complicated and let this do some automation inside. I think for both questions, no matter uh, what the question is about, that both of them is yes. In our, in our company, uh, we have the job scheduler called Kava. I don't a C A W A, and then it could uh, uh, automate uh, to schedule jobs. And uh, in the in the cloud form, I think some uh, I'm not familiar with the uh, the uh, the terms of cloud, but the several 
the cloud have the similar function to automate and schedule jobs. So oh. if, if, that's the, if that is the question about, then yes. So is it possible to use the task scheduler to schedule this? Yes. You know, like you see the code and then use task and scheduler to run it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, 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 I know that for sure that could be done. Myself I haven't done because I, right now I think my more is about data on the data side. So not on the job automation side, but I do know that my coworkers do that. So okay. other part, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, the, the example you were given is using Excel sheet. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you also use the uh, import the say like uh, the data mm -hmm. saved in a TXT format or something like mm -hmm. the flat files? That is yes, because for the uh, really for pandas, this mm -hmm. function is read Excel. For CVS, it's called the read CVS. And then for others, if it's a pipe separated, it could be read something. My, uh, again, myself haven't worked on, um, I, I only use the, my, I only use the read Excel and read the CVS, never uh, tried other part, but uh, definitely yes. The TXT, no problem. Okay, cool. Pandas has pretty good, uh, good uh, variety of place or variety of uh, functions to use. Right, so, you know, uh, Python can, can, you know, Python code can be run on other, um, mm -hmm. like other tools or something. And, and when you use, uh, now I can not remember what the, the other thing was called. Um, Charm? Uh, is that called charm? I think I use that. Uh, so when you run the code you posted here, mm -hmm. um, say like on charm or something, PyCharm, I think it's called PyCharm. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can the code okay. be, you know, the exactly just copy and then paste over and run it? Mm -hmm. Or in I, I use I use PyCharm to run the Hadoop jobs, so okay. so I guess yes. But uh, myself never run this on the PyCharm myself because for as I mentioned that uh, work different right for this work mm -hmm. only about uh, the data analyst part to to get this from Excel or from a uh, uh, text or CVS to Excel to SQL Server or from SQL Server, save it, read from SQL Server, save it in Excel in many type. Like, so that I, I guess so, right? Why not? Mm, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, also, many thanks to Michael uh, Chu. Uh, he shared a link uh, that um, talks about a, a good paper, how to insert table into SQL with Python. So mm -hmm. I think Debbie already shared that link, uh, post that link to everybody. So if, if you're interested, uh, check, uh, check out the, the chat window and it should be there. Thank you, Michael. Um, Another question is how to schedule Python ETL package. Mm, interesting question. Uh, as I mentioned that for our company, we use Kava to schedule that. Okay. And myself is more on the data side, like each data column, what does this, <laughs> the, the, the value of each column more on that side so that I, I don't have the direct information for that. Okay. But I know that it could be done for for sure. That the, just to give the connection string, right? To to give different connection string 
you use uh, uh, connection string to uh, to connect to SQL Server, use another to connect to different uh, DB2, and then we do have that to to do the manipulation, and then but still uh, my mm, my experience are not in the scheduler part, so I don't want to mislead. Even though I know it's done by the people in my group many times, but I never write the code there. Okay. Uh, any good way to schedule the ETL packages if um, we de develop it with the Jupyter Notebook? Oh, that is not. I, I don't think so. The Jupyter Notebook is best for a beginner learner. For mm. scheduling jobs, those uh, uh, I would uh, suggest using other IDEs. I, okay. for, let me see whether I have a Jupyter Notebook here. The Jupyter, the, you can see on my screen, right? Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, my my computer recently become very slow, so that uh, I like it because it's easy to you easy to learn. But uh, for the Jupyter notebook, uh, uh, developers don't like it. <laughs> the the data scientists uh, like Jupyter notebook, but developer prefer other ways to to test and then run the code. That's my feeling. Oh, okay. I don't know what other people's opinion towards this. Well, maybe we can find out later on and do a survey <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yeah. I, I right now I'm also uh, moving away from Ruby's or notebook because I want to more look uh, like a uh, developer. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the fastest uh, process in all your examples and in your experience? Uh, uh, what, actually, what Par Pi Spark or something else? Uh, the for the for uh, I uh, I would uh, reframe this this uh, question using my own understanding, I, I gave the example of using Pandas data frame, and then gave the example of using PD, uh, PYODBC. Uh, these two, of course, are not the, especially in the example that I gave, the, the job is wrong, kind of inside of my CPU, right? So they are first, uh, limited by my CPU capacity, and then limited by the package we use, like uh, PYODBC or uh, Pandas. So if it's row by row, it's very slow. Uh, if it, you can do execute fast, that means bulk insert, it will be faster. But both of these are not a good example to for for huge amount of data. Of course, when the data become huge, I would rather to move it into the Hadoop system. Even though it's still about the SQL Server, in the Hadoop system, you can have much power CPUs, a cluster of CPUs to work with. So I hope that is my understanding of this question. For that part, of course, uh, PySpark is the best. PySpark wrote into, insert into SQL Server. It's such a pleasant task. It's yeah. all over much better than PYODBC list and much over, much better than uh, Pandas data frame. Yeah, he was referring to, you know, loading several millions of Right, I, the, that definitely utilized. Uh, I think for that type, we definitely utilize the, uh, the the Hadoop cluster okay. computer capacities, not using my own CPUs. And especially these days, our CPUs. Uh, I, I, we, I have two computers at work. One is a virtual 
desktop, another is my my own laptop sitting at my home. Um, uh, so for a lot of IU, IO work, I will use my virtual desktop at least that's closer to the data source and then uh, where I save, right? Not, not on myself, uh, not on my own because it will bring things here onto my own CPU and then right back to the, to, to the network. So that's how I, for that part, I will definitely, um, let's see, uh, evaluate what's the fastest way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the next question is: Do do Excel calculated columns can be um, be loaded to SQL Server using a script? Yeah, interesting question. I didn't try. I I would <laughs> challenge the uh, person that gave this question. Try that. For myself, what I did is uh, when we I what I I, I shared inside of mm -hmm. uh, let's see. inside of here is what I uh, first tried in my work. I uh, in my work at the beginning, I did do a lot of calculation in Excel first, and then do a lot of manipulation in Excel, copy paste what the result in Excel to the uh, SQL SQL command, and then and then copy copy back the data set to uh, to Excel file. Uh, so what I did is I read the what I did with Python is I read the Excel file inside of Python and then manipulate in the Python to get whatever I need and then insert the result into the SQL server command that the SQL command that I'm going to query. So so I I didn't it didn't occur to me that I will first do the calculation inside of Excel and then read it with Python. So I, I would see that's a good way. Uh, if you if you if your source file has already have a calculated column, you, it's good to test. I I don't know this answer, but uh, interesting interesting question. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a good question. Um, so the last one is: Can you please give examples of additional tasks you use Python with SQL for? Um, like uh, in a data analytics area or something. Oh, uh, let me think. Uh, I uh, that uh, kind of uh, manipulate with different data source, and then inside of data source, do whatever we can do with uh, like the similar task of what we do in SQL Server, and then save it in whatever type of the data, the, uh, the data called destination, <laughs> uh, the, where we want to save, use whatever way that uh, suited for the business need. I think that is more on a data pipeline I use the SQL. I, I use Python um, for data pipeline. As I mentioned, that we have linked uh, with Py uh, PySpark. We first uh, have two, uh, da three data source. One is in DB2. Another is in SQL Server. The third is in Hive Table. And then both three of them will form data frame with PySpark data frame, and then join them, manipulate. Uh, Aggregate all those type of thing, and then eventually we we write the result either in Hadoop or in SQL Server. That's uh, I I would see that's a typical work that uh, could be expanded more. But I hope that is an additional task. That I hope this is the 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 answer that the person is expecting or or some other analytics 
part. Well, that's Maybe the, that's what comes to my mind. More <laughs> yeah. on the data pipeline one, because mm -hmm. with data pipeline code, then we can do the data pipeline automation, scheduling those things. So. Mm -hmm. that, that's my more, more of my knowledge or existing existing experience. Um, so stem from that earlier the question earlier about the calculated columns. Have you have you ever uh, done like extracting data from the uh, database and do some manipulation with Python code? Mm -hmm. Say yeah. like extract uh are you able to extract data from view oh yeah definitely this uh, uh the view is much easier than complicated this uh, the call command for this one it's kind of this simple one right uh, but uh, you can make it much much more complicated like the excel that like that, that the the example i gave with this link the SQL itself will be more than 100 lines and with several uh, CTEs, uh, many layer of sub-queries. So uh, uh, definitely a uh, view is, um, should be very easy to, to yeah, any place uh, for, 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 for Python to grab data from SQL Server. And then after you grab the data set into your CPU, either as a Python uh, data frame or as a list of list, you can do many manipulation there too. Okay. Any manipulation, sort, uh, combine two columns, filter things, anything that, as I mentioned, anything that we know could be achieved in SQL Server could do on any part of this intermediate or destination. Python will, you, if you Google Python package for uh, NoSQL database connection or NoSQL database uh, manipulation, it, it will give it to you. And then if you uh, save Excel file one, one of the, the tasks that I run is they want the user wants to save Excel, wants to save my data set in three different Excel sheets. The first two sheets they want to have the first two sheets the first one have forty percent of random sample. The second one have forty percent of random sample. The third one have twenty percent of the random sample, right? So that what I did is I gave uh, a, a random number of one to ten in SQL Server in the SQL command, as the and then in Python manipulate which number one to four will go to first sheet the two to two to uh, sorry well actually it's zero one three but anyway it's 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 a good way of thinking what our daily work could be done automatically with Python. That's what my game was. And then that's what my challenge to the audience is. Like in your own daily work, there are some that is time consuming. If you need to mm, click, mm, copy paste multiple times, then you, you can, Think of those tasks and then try to use Python to, to, to achieve the same thing. And then it could be repeated many, many times. So it's a very rewarding process. Not only learn Python, but it's kind of truly use Python. Sounds good. And uh, this, uh, well, I guess so somebody asked about the, the presentation code. So, um, this uh, session has been recorded and I will post the recording link to our website. And and also in your slide, uh, Joanne, you mm -hmm. said uh, you have the link, right? The, can you go to the last slide? 
right. you had about that uh, mm -hmm. with that link. Yeah, yeah. 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 Presentation confused. Yeah. Um, so if some someone click this uh, link, um, yeah, I will I will click it so everybody can see, right? Oh, okay, cool. So they can see your presentation code in here, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay. last summer. Uh, at that time, my presentation is still called when Python meets SQL. So okay. it's more code than the presentation I gave today. Today, my my uh, desire is to kind of more inspire the audience to Google themselves, to design a, a, a project of them for themselves and then use it. But uh, one year ago, it's a lot of code. It's in uh, the Jupyter Notebook file, or it's also in the um, PowerPoint file. But uh, for that's for the for the SQL manipulation of SQL code with the parameters for PYODBC. Mostly, it's about PYODBC, and then in this. This is the slide you, uh, you shared today, right? Yeah. Right. This is one that I shared today. So, so for this one, it I will. It's yeah, the it's more like the first one, uh, to um, to use Py to use pandas data frame. If you come here, category goes to Python, you will see the there are five examples. Oh, cool. Yeah, to use the read the file module for one and then through loop. So you will have you know, fast, slow, those more convenient to use. These, these codes are this, each one has a code session, so you can copy paste it into your uh, Jupyter notebook. <laughs> if, you are, oh. if you first start with, uh, with this, can to be the notebook is a good choice, but it, but uh, a developer will laugh at the Jupyter notebook. They say Jupyter notebook doesn't have the debug functions, so they prefer use the spider. So it's still the spider also comes with um, also comes with uh, anaconda package. Okay. So once you download that and install, then you'll get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything will, you will, will get the Jupyter Notebook and a spider here on the start menu. Cool. It's uh, almost 10.30. Uh, and, and that's all the question we have right now. Thank you so much, Joanne. Oh, uh, one last question. Uh, in Earlier, you mentioned that you use a triple uh, double code. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you um, say that again? Uh, why you use that? Okay, uh, for C for Python, Python string, you can use a normal quote or use. Uh, you can use single quote, right? Yeah, you can yeah. use three type. Three type no, uh, they're slightly uh, different. Like uh this 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 is wrong and then this i still understand why my become this strange the this or use this <laughs> they are, they are yeah, almost yeah. the same but this one has a good one a triple uh, double quote you can break it then still it will still be one string. It's perfect for for SQL command because when we, as a SQL developer, write SQL inside of uh, SQL Server Management Studio, we never pay attention to the line breaks, right? It's, mm -hmm. And so that for this one, you have to be within one line. This has to be within one line. If you have to want to break uh, one line, uh string you will need the concatenation and the escape 
uh, yeah, you have to use the, the concatenation and this, uh, this, this, this uh, one. Yes. Use the mm -hmm. backward, <laughs> backward job. I I. This is backward, I guess. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. for so you have. You See have, the direction it is, leans to. <laughs> yeah, I I think like for this one in my example, uh, it's I, I see the the code I did print this in order to show the audience mm -hmm. that well even though you see the string in three lines because of this uh, the concatenate and this number we only if you print it only one line but if you have a, a, a triple double quote and you break into three lines if, when you print it it will be three lines oh Okay. So, so if you, I think I like the Python way, and I also want to point out it to everyone because it's very versatile. In Python, the string is very versatile. In SQL, if you need a if you need a quote inside of a string, it needs something like double double quote, right? So so in Python, it's very versatile. You can choose uh, the one as outside and the inside and still take it. Uh, so, 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 so inside of uh, inside of uh, SQL command, you can feel very free to use this without uh, worry anything about the. Without you using it, use it. yeah, uh -huh. to, to, like the uh, character uh, column equal to this. Mm -hmm. Yes, that makes sense. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's a nice tip to to uh, remember. Yeah. Very good one. I, I like I like my Python journey, so I want to share it with everyone. So kind of encourage you to try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That uh, it it's very helpful to to learn from somebody who went through the journey and then I also you know share with you the especially the aha moments. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's encouraging, not, not only informative, but also encouraging. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Joanne. This is a wonderful session, uh, and yeah, it does uh, give us a quite a bit of information, especially with your links and everything. Um, yeah, thank and you very much, Tara, for having me. Thank you. Uh, and thank everybody for attending and uh, i'll post the recording uh tomorrow to our website okay that's all we have and thank everybody again for attending and we'll see you at our next session thank you joanne thank you bye bye thank you. bye, bye, -bye.